at school, when I was 11, our teacher, Rosie O'Grady, our headmistress, um, gave us vocational talks and would invite people who had vocations to come and tell us about them. And after every vocation, she would, vocational talk, she would ask, who in the class would like to do that job? And I put my hand up for everything. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I mean, I was 11, and someone would come in and talk about their job with great enthusiasm. you say, gosh, I want to do that. <laughs> yes, me. Anyway, one day the priest came in, and he talked about his job with great enthusiasm. And a couple of us put a hand up afterwards. Then something very strange happened. <clears throat> we were given the afternoon off to go and see the priest to tell him we wanted to become priests. Mm -hmm. Now, we hadn't been given the afternoon off to go and see the pilot of the um, paddle steamer, mm -hmm. or the fireman, or the doctor, or the nurse, or whatever. But for some reason, being a Roman Catholic school, we were given the afternoon off. Of course, delighted 11-year-old boys, Danny Sweeney and myself. There was another girl who put her hand up. Obviously, she wasn't given the afternoon off, which seemed unfair to me. Anyway, off we were sent to go and see the priest and told him we wanted to be one. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I became to be trained to be a priest, just because I got the afternoon off school. And then I decided that I wasn't good enough really to be a secular priest, so I'd become a monk instead. So I wrote off the Dominican monks, and they wrote back, and I filled in forms, and all was done, and so it was time to leave the school, uh, the college, the, and, and go home and wait for the, the Dominicans to come and take me away. Anyway, I got home, but there was another letter arrived, said, oh, by the way, you're a year too young. So by then I'd left school. So um, I uh, had to go to another school. Luckily, it was a mixed sex school. And so I decided rather than become a monk, I'd rather wear a skirt, I decided to chase it instead. What well, is well, another one of those weird things? I was working in the Roundhouse Theatre in London, in the box office. At that time, the Roundhouse was a part of the centre of the great hippie revolution, uh, in, in, in hippie theatre. and. We used to have groups like La Mama from New York and, you know, kind of amazing groups and uh, rock concerts and everything. And so I got the job because I, I became a fully paid up member of the hippie tribe <laughs> round about then. And I had, uh, I, but I was a hippie who could count. So I, 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 they got me, they gave me a job in the box office. Um, and then one day someone mistook me for an actor and recommended me to a, a young director called Ken Campbell and Ken Campbell came in and says to me, ah, you want to join my company? And I said, yes, because I've always found it difficult to say no. So I say yes, and then try and to get out of everything afterwards. How, how do I get out of this one? Anyway, I said yes. But uh, he said, ah, oh, well, I'll go and see someone else, and if he doesn't want to do it, I'll be back on Monday. <laughs> I thought, oh, goodness, I hope he doesn't come back. After, after I thought about it, I thought, I actually like being in this job. Anyway, Gladly, in a way, he did come back on the Monday and said, yeah, you're starting next week. So that was it. I went off to become an actor. Well, I like them all, really. They all have a different quality and a different kind of intensity and the different um, needs of, of doing them, really. But I suppose if I had to make a choice, it would be live theatre. I like performing to people, talking. I like telling a story. An actor's a storyteller, and that's what I like to do. I, I originally had actually auditioned for Bilbo Baggins, mm -hmm. and it um, got down to the last two actors they were deciding on, and I happened to be one of them. So they already knew me mm -hmm. from way back then. And then, as luck would have it, working with Ian McKellen and touring to Wellington, and. Peter came and saw us, and um, I got to meet him, and um, he was really, really nice, so that was good. And then, when um, uh, what's his name, Del Toro? Um, Galimo? Galimo Del Toro, yeah, when he, he was directing it, they asked me to do a screen test so that he could see it. And I was t I've been told since that um, when he saw me as that, part, and that, he saw me at that part right immediately. See, he said, kept saying, see, see. And so they asked me if I'd do it, and I said, see. Sí. Can't say. Fair enough. It's all very hush hush. I can't even tell you what the um, costume is, really. Oh, okay. Is that secret? Well, but I can give you a hint. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Sand Sanderman the white, Gandalf the grey, 
but I'd rather go to the brown. brown. So I'll give you a hint of what colour my costume might be. It is funny, I was, I was once um, sitting at a table like this, and there was a queue of children coming up to meet me, in, and they're in a toy shop somewhere, and this little girl in the queue suddenly got terrified. I mean, terrified. I, I mean, the terror you don't really ever want to see in anyone. Mm -hmm. And I looked behind me, and a Dalek had just come back <laughs> behind me. And I actually stood up uh, at the table and said, do not worry, little girl, I am the doctor, you're safe with me. And I said it, I didn't act it. I said it because this little girl, she wasn't acting, she was being terrified. And I went up and I picked her up and held her, I said, you're all right, it's all right with me. But I was just amazed at, uh, at seeing that real terror and, and what those pepper pots could do. No, no, I don't know anything. People keep asking me all over the world, are they going to bring back all the doctors? And what I'd like them to do is to not bring us back as doctors, but bring us back as actors playing different parts. That they weren't going to extend my um, period as Doctor Who. I sat back and laughed at that. How wrong I was. I'm bowled away with Matt Smith. I think he's amazing. He's got a face that you wouldn't really know what age it was. Yeah, it's, it's it, uh, kind of rubbery. Yeah, it's rubbery. And it's, um, yeah, it's, he's completely believable. I believe he comes from Gallifrey. I mean, I come from near Galloway, yeah, so but he comes that. from Gallifrey, definitely. Okay. So you he's an alien. That. I mean, I think a lot of the writers, creators of the new Doctor Who are all Doctor Who fans. The fans have taken over. The fans are running Doctor Who, which is brilliant. Because the BBC did a bad job of it, so the fans can do a much better job, I think. Anyway, it looks as if they are at the moment. And um, so uh, it's the, the, they grew up, a lot of them, on my Doctor. And those stories are in there. And they're, they're mining, remining them. The doctor's an old and mature person. Mm. I mean, my theory, and I still stick to it in a way, is that um, what was great about the earlier Doctor Who's was it was all old guys being superheroes. They didn't have to wear their underpants outside their trousers to, you know, win the argument. Oh, I see, because it doesn't have it then. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the selling point. Come to Hamilton and you won't get the shakes. I must say, um, the last time again I came to, this is my second, um, I was mightily impressed by the one in this city. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen such costumes. They were brilliant. I mean, the costume parades were just stunning and mind-blowing and better than anything any film company or television company could produce. Well, what I love about these are... Young teenagers, uh, even I've just come back, you know, from Australia, where there was one in Melbourne, and they, they they all hang around in groups, and they're all having a great time. They have such a lovely, lovely time. How can anyone knock it? They're all excited about what they've done. They, they've dressed themselves up. They're living in their fantasies, and they're they're you're just sharing them with each other. They're playing games, but they're happy. They're really happy and contented. They're taking photographs, and I could spend all day just watching them. You know, I, was, I, I should hide inside a Dalek and not let them know I'm in there. And I could just sit in there and just watch them enjoying themselves. It gives me such pleasure watching them. Yeah. Yeah, I literally might eat them if I could do it, really. Fair enough. I'm yeah. sure a few of them out there will be kind of tasty. <laughs> yeah, there are, I'm telling you.